This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to talk about Justin Trudeau's groceries and the recent comments that he's made. It's difficult to deny that Justin Trudeau is a man of many talents. In addition to ruling over the People's Republic of Canada for eight years, Trudeau is perhaps the greatest living master of cultural appropriation that we've ever seen. His beautiful and colorful and diverse wardrobe is certainly appreciated by everyone globally. This is exactly how you expect a Canadian prime minister to dress. Now, many people don't realize, though, that Trudeau is also a master economist at the level of a Paul Krugman. So what do you do when you see prices rising at the grocery store? Do you do silly things? Do you blame central bank money printing? Do you blame government policies? Do you blame carbon taxes for increasing transportation costs and thus being passed on into grocery costs? Of course not. You need to actually blame the grocery stores like Trudeau does, because as everyone knows, our food literally comes from grocery stores. And if we're all going to stand by idly and allow them to put expensive little price stickers on our avocados and tomatoes, then humanity really doesn't stand a chance. Like his father, Trudeau understands that you cannot have true prosperity until the capitalist pigs are taken out behind the shed and given a stern talking to. Price controls, centralized government control of the economy are always the surest path to long-term prosperity, as some of these pictures show from Cuba. Here is the quote. Trudeau says that the heads of large grocery, grocery stores need to come up with a plan to stabilize food prices. Let me be very clear. If their plan doesn't provide real relief, then we will take further action and we are not ruling anything out, including tax measures. Taxes, that's a brilliant idea, actually. I never thought of the government taxing people. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a comment. So do Canadian grocery stores engage in price gouging? If so, we would expect to see high profit margins among those companies. For example, in 2022, the report is that Canada's three largest grocers, Lao Blau, Sobeys, and Metro, collectively reported more than $100 billion Canadian dollar in terms of sales and earned more than $3.6 billion in profits. Now, while this sounds like a lot of money in terms of headlines, when you do the actual calculation, that's only a 3.6% profit margin, which is pretty pathetic and low, like most grocery stores worldwide. I'll link to this article that quotes that in the description notes below. But if we take a look at the financial statements for Lao Blau, it looks like their individual profit margin is 3.48, which tracks. And then if we look at one of the competitors, Metro, their profit margin is 4.78. So that original figure seems reasonable, somewhere between 3 and 4% profit margins. Now, that's those are not good profit margins, but what is a really good profit margin? If you want to see one, you should check out companies that use government coercion to sell their products, like this one, for example, you've probably heard of, and they have a profit margin of 27.55%. But somehow, Justin Trudeau and political leaders don't have a problem with high profit margins when it comes to companies like this for some strange reason. Now, if we rewind a year ago, Justin Trudeau was attacking Bitcoin and he was attacking any politicians who recommended Bitcoin as an inflation hedge. Turns out that was not very good financial advice on his part. The Canadian stock market as measured by the TSX is up 6.68%. This is one way of grading a prime minister or president is through their stock market performance. Bitcoin is up 31, almost 32% over that same period. So Justin Trudeau gave pretty poor advice here when he recommended staying away from Bitcoin. Turns out that Bitcoin is actually, as you might guess, the best way to protect yourself from politicians like Trudeau, as well as from the central bankers that they work for. Moving to a fiat standard ensured that food price inflation would be a problem for the next 50 years as it has been. And there are a couple of amazing charts here. This first one from Nico. Consumer food prices have gone parabolic since 1971, which is when the US left the gold standard. And this was really the beginning of the modern fiat money era, which has been a complete disaster. There's another chart from WTF happened in 1971, which is one of my favorites. This is the unit price per can of Campbell's condensed tomato soup. And what the caption here says, unlike a lot of other products, uh, Campbell's condensed tomato soup cannot easily hide the effects of inflation by shrinking while keeping the same price because those cans stay, I, I believe they've stayed the same size since the beginning of the uh, 20th century. And what you can see here from 1900 until 1971, the price was approximately 10 cents per can. And then starting in 1971, we began this huge 
ascent. This is probably a better measurement of the true, true rate of inflation rather than government massage numbers like the CPI, for example. But this shows that the US dollar in terms, in soup terms, has really lost, uh, call it 90% of its value since 1971. This is the true thing that's behind grocery price inflation and all these other forms of inflation. It's bad, it's bad decisions by politicians and then it's also the central bank cronies that they work for and their money printing. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.